Welcome. My name is Leonard Schultz. Today we're going to show you a system for control of a COVID-19 virus as it's expelled from the patient and then taken via a capture device to the ULPA filter which is capable of entrapping the virus. The whole idea behind this is patient isolation and elimination and control of the COVID virus in order to add an additional layer of protection for the healthcare worker taking care of these infected patients. I'd like to now demonstrate to you the components of the system that we've developed. It's based upon a uh, mist or oxygen tent that as we all know because of pe previous use is well tolerated by the patient. It's 24 by 24 by 24 inches in dimension, has its own support frame. After you open it up, the last part of it to complete the four, wheel, four wall enclosure is a back wall that attaches to the rest of the frame. And in this wall, we have placed our own resealable access ports that I'll demonstrate to you a little later. And that completes, that will complete the enclosure. The patient's torso is placed within it. Now that we have the patient isolated, we need to capture the aerosol. That is done with a product that we've sold now for a number of years called the Mini Square and have used it for smoke evacuation. This is what it looks like. It comes in a header pouch. Once you take it out of the pouch, the product has six feet of sterile tubing and a plenum. The plenum consists of the reticulated open cell phone and it attaches to any part of the tent that we want to place it on by removing the release paper and beneath it is an adhesive layer. Once it's in position within the tent adjacent to the patient, the, the tubing is thrown off, brought out under the, the flap of the tent, and we'll demonstrate that a little later, and then is attached to an ULPA filter, which in turn is attached to a smoke evacuator, all commonly recognized materials within a modern operating room. That completes the system. Now that we've described our system for patient isolation, and aerosol capture. Let's get to the, the various components and especially the most difficult one, which would be construction of the oxygen tent. Actually, it's not all that difficult. It consists of two parts. One part opens up to produce a temporary partially stable tent, but now we have to get to the tricky part, which is the open back. The top of the tent you can easily recognize because one of the openings is in the top. The clear plastic will become the front of the tent. It has its own wire frame, which will support, will support it once the construction is complete. But the tricky part will be putting on the fourth wall, which is the back. You'll see that there are a number of these clips around the perimeter. These will fit in to the clips around the perimeter of the partially constructed the tent, and we're going to finish that off. How long does it take to do it? Not very long, and you'll see within this back wall, we have the access ports uh, already in place. So let's, let's continue now. To do this, we're going to realign the tent so that it will be quite clear to you. We now have opened the tent for your orientation, the top, of the tent can be recognized by this opening in the top. The flap is toward the front or what will become the front of the tent. 
and the back wall, which is the one with the access ports, has already been attached for the most part at clips that cover the periphery of the, um, of the tent. And then just to complete it, I'm just going to complete these, these little clips up here. One, here's another one. And that pretty much takes care of it. You now have pretty solid construction of the tent and the patient is now ready to be placed inside of it. Now that the tent has been constructed, I'd like to show you how all the components come together. So the tent at this point has three open, three sides. The patient has been placed inside. The mini square has been placed adjacent to the patient's head and neck area to collect the viral aerosol. It in turn has been connected to an OPA filter and a smoke evacuator. The last stage in preparation for intubation will be placement of the respiratory tubing close to the patient, close to the patient's head and neck area. At that point, with everything now set up, we now complete the patient isolation by bringing down the clear plastic flap. But it isn't hard to do it. You'll just cover all this over with the with the blanket that is covering the patient. All the tubes have come out through the bottom of the flap and we are now ready to proceed to intubation. Now that the tent has been constructed, the patient is in place, the respiratory tubing is ready inside the tent, ready to be connected to the endotracheal tube. Now let's see how we can access the patient for purposes of intubation or, for that matter, extubation. First thing we should do is pull up the tabs that expose the opening. These are uh, held in place by these tabs just, just beyond the access port so they stay out of your way. Now that the access ports are open, you have free access into the tent with your laryngoscope, your endotracheal tube, or whatever the, the need is. And through the clear plastic top, you can clearly see how to put the tube in. And then once the endotracheal tube is in place and taped, then you can take your respiratory tubing, attach it to the endotracheal tube to complete the process. During extubation, it would be just reversed. The respiratory tubing would be removed, the tube would be taken out, removed outside, and then the tabs replaced to close and reseal the access ports to maintain isolation of the patient.